He's brought you some money. He's been twice, in fact. He wants you to sign for it. Do you know you've been delirious for four days? You've scarcely eaten or drunk anything. If it weren't for Nastasia here myself, heaven alone knows what would have happened to you. What money? From your mother, evidently. Thirty-five rubles. Well, Nastasia, don't stand there grinning. Fetch him some soup. Stop giving orders. He's done nothing but give everybody orders since he found you. Do you want some soup? You're very lucky to have such friends. She's been wonderful too. Everybody's been wonderful, even your landlady. What money is this? It's from your mama. Do you really think he's in a fit state to sign? Of course he is. He's saner than you. Give me the book. Now, Rodia, I'll help you to sign it, and then we can let this young man go about his business. Oh, I don't want the money. Don't want it? Are you mad? I thought you said he was saying it to me. Don't interrupt! Look, Rodia, don't be difficult. You have to take the money because, my friend, I've borrowed ten rubles from the landlady on the strength of it and been out and bought you new clothes. Are you aware, old fellow? You've been wandering about in rags. Look. Trousers, shirt, and uh, boots. Where did he get them? In the haymarket. <laughs> Not new, of course, but in perfect condition. Uh, you'd have done better in baskets. But what are you, a messenger or an expert on clothes? Come, Rodia. Sign the man's book and let him go. Sign the book. Splendid. Well, you're a fine one. You leave the university without saying anything to anyone. You move your lodgings in the same way. Why do you just want to disappear? What's the matter with you? I hadn't the money for the university. Oh, my dear chap, I could have helped. Don't you know, I'm getting a lot of translations now from publishers. I could have passed some on. I didn't want your help. I don't want it now. What are you doing here? How did you find me? You may well ask. I, I inquired everywhere for you, but no one knew where you'd gone. And then, as a last resort, I tried the address office at the police station. And miracle of miracles, they knew where you lived. What did they say? Well, I've, I heard all about the IOU and everything. Uh, I've, I've squared all that up, by the way. I persuaded the landlady to buy back the note. <laughs> she really is a charming woman. Who is? Your mistress. And so are you. He's terrible. He really is. He'd get round anyone. Here, have some soup. He's got my mistress dancing like a bear. Anyway, there's no need to worry about the IOU anymore. What did they say at the police station? Well, they really were first rate, I must say. But perhaps because they learned that Porfiry Petrovich is my cousin. Porfiry Petrovich? Yeah, of course, I must have told you. Well, no, no, perhaps I didn't. Anyway, naturally, when they heard at the police station that the chief investigating magistrate was my cousin, they fell over themselves to be helpful. What way? In finding your address. And, and Zamyotov, the young clerk there, with whom I've become very friendly, by the way, he was equally fascinated when he realised I knew you. In fact, I brought him here. Zamyotov was here? Yeah. Well, you've been ill at the police station, is that right? Anyway, he insisted on coming here with me. He found you in a delirium, whining all the time about a sock. <laughs> Zamyotov hunted high low for it and finally found it. You shouldn't have brought him here. It's nothing to do with me. Ah, here's Zosimov. Oh, do you remember Zosimov? 
I cannot get used to calling him Doctor, because I've known him since he was ten, and he was always such a terrible dunce. Do you ever stop talking, dear boy? Only in the presence of superior intellect, which clearly is not often. Well, are you going to examine him? He looks better. Oh, yeah, he's completely recovered his wits. Good. Let's hope you'll soon do the same. How are you today? He's a lot better. He's Let him answer for himself. I'm all right. I'm perfectly all right. Just leave me alone. Rodia, did you hear about the murder? Yes, he isn't interested. Who has accused him? Perfiri Petrovich. Well, he's not actually charged him, but he's very suspicious. Does that mean you intend to prove otherwise? Well, it stands to reason. The, the accusation contradicts all the known laws of human behaviour. Good heavens, all the known laws? <laughs> well, don't laugh, my friend, until you hear. He was painting the flat a couple of floors below with a friend, Dimitri. They're both young. In a moment of high spirits, Dmitri dabs Nikolai with a paintbrush and Nikolai chases him down into the courtyard in full view of everyone. So? Well, all this literally within a few minutes of having supposedly murdered the two ladies upstairs. Is that likely? How did Perferi Petrovich come to suspect them? Well, Nikolai sold a pair of earrings to a man, also a pawnbroker, who became suspicious when he heard about the murder because he knew that Nikolai had been working in the house. And he went to the police, I suppose? Yes. Yet, Nikolai finally broke down and confessed that he'd found them in the room where he was painting, behind the door. Behind the door? He found them behind the door? Yes. What's the matter? Are you all right? Oh, he's just working from a dream. Leave him alone. Uh, doesn't it make it worse than finding him in the street? No, oddly it doesn't. You see, the two men who called on the pawnbroker about the time of the murder found the door locked from the inside. However, the situation is complicated by the fact that Nikolai tried to hang himself. Only complicated? Oh, <laughs> you see, nothing but facts, facts, facts. Yes? Rodion Romanovich Raskolnikov. Well, that's him. Ah. What do you want? I beg your pardon? He said, what do you want? Well, <laughs> I want... Well, I must go. I'll come and see you later. He's been ill. Oh. Do, do you think my visit might tire him? Do your visits normally tire people? I beg your pardon? He said, do your visits normally tire people? Well, certainly not. I thought as he was ill, he might prefer not to have visitors. May I know whom I have the honour of addressing? How can you be sure it's an honour before you know who it is? <laughs> this is Razumikin, a student, a friend of Rodia's. A student? My, is, my name is Zosimov, a doctor. Uh, but please, don't tell me who you are, because I'm just on my way out, and it's a needless complication. Tell him. <laughs> He's staying. <laughs> I'm Piotr Petrovich Luzhin, and I have reason to hope my name's not entirely unknown to you. Is it possible you can have received no information about me? Your mama began a letter to you nearly two weeks ago, putting you in full possession of the glad tidings. You're her fiancé. If you mean your sisters, yes, I have that honour. If I'd known of your illness, I might have been able to come sooner, but you know what business is and I had some very important legal matters to attend to. I'm expecting your sister and your mother any moment. I found lodgings for them. Where? In Bakalaev's house in Boskresensky Street. <laughs> That's a terrible place. Why do you go there? Well, I'm a stranger here. I was hardly to know. And I myself am sharing a room with a Mr. Lebezhatnikov at Madame Lebevexel's house. Lebezhatnikov? Oh, do you know him? Very advanced young man. But I like to meet young people. One learns new things from them. Really? I am of that opinion, yes. Roger Romanovich, I trust our acquaintance may, in view of the circumstances... Is it true that you told my sister within an hour of her betrothal that what pleased you most about her was that she was a beggar? Oh, how about this? Did you not say that? And did you not give us your reason that a wife's poverty gave her husband a proper control over her? Well, if that's what your mama wrote to you... She wrote, you... precisely, that you said you preferred to marry a girl without dowry because it was better for a wife to treat her husband as her benefactor. 
That is what she wrote, thinking to praise your level-headedness. But I put it for what it is. Your mama's way of thinking is somewhat high-flown and romantic. Tell you what! For what? If you ever again mention anything my mother said, I shall personally kick you down the stairs. Yes, the honor, oh, oh, So that's it. Well, let me tell you, sir, even if you are ill, I'm the I best... I am of... not ill. Well, so much the worst... Oh, oh don't to the hell! hell! What is the matter with you? He may be a pompous ass, but he's your sister's fiancé. I will not let him marry her. I will not. I had it all in the letter from my mother. My sister Dunia was sent home in disgrace by the family she worked for. The owner of the house had conceived a passion for her. <laughs> That's all too familiar. Subsequently, the wife discovered that Dunia was entirely blameless. Tried to make amends by promoting this marriage with illusion. And I know that if it weren't for me and my mother, then Dunia would never have entertained the idea for a moment. I'm going to let you rest now. You must sleep. Zosimov thought that the best thing for you. I'll be back later. Go to sleep. Tell me something. Did that painter really try to hang himself? Why are you so interested? Go to sleep. Did he? Yes, but it proves nothing. And I have a feeling that my cousin Perfiri is already working in another direction. Which direction? Well, he's beginning to think it was one of her customers who did it. He's begun examining all those who left pledges with her, or so the papers say. Now, go to sleep. I'll be back later. Your tea, sir. Fancy seeing you here. The last time I saw you, you were lying unconscious in that little room of yours. Yes. You hunted for my sock and gave it to me. Well, you seem so concerned about it, but do you remember it? Razumikin told me about it. Are you well enough to be out? You look a little strange. There's nothing wrong with me. I'm glad to hear it. Are you? And shall I tell you the next question you're about to ask me? Oh, do you read minds, then? I can read yours. In that case, I should be enchanted to hear what I'm about to ask you. Weren't you about to ask me why I'm reading the papers of the last few days? <laughs> well, it's true, but I assume you're catching up on the news. The news in general, or on one item in particular? Don't you want to know? I was catching up on the news of the murder of the old woman and her sister. Doesn't that set your police clerk's brain ticking? Well, it's no concern of mine. The old woman you were talking about in the police station. When I fainted. Remember? Of course, I remember. You haven't caught him then? The murderer? Not yet, but we shall. He seems a desperate fellow carrying it out in broad daylight. <laughs> and who's going to catch him? You? A pretty fellow like you? Don't you think he's been too clever for you already? A man may commit a clever crime, but he will often make a silly mistake afterwards. A whole gang of counterfeiters was caught last month in just that way. Oh, yes, I remember I read about it. Peasants. They didn't even know that the larger the gang, the more certain they were of being caught. Even three is too many. No, they got caught because they tried to change too much, too quickly. Mm. And how would you have done it? I would have used many banks for a start. Changing only small quantities in each. And then I would have seemed slow and fastidious in the filling in of the forms, counting of the money, plaguing the cashier with irrelevances, making him count the notes over and over again to avoid error. 
he would have been glad to get rid of me, I can tell you. But, in fact, when you're actually there, knowing that the notes in your hand are false and that the cashier is trained to spot them, you'd be inclined to tremble, wouldn't you? Shake a bit? Our murderer did. It's interesting. How do you know that? He came away with so little when he might have had so much. He panicked, that's obvious. Then why haven't you caught him there? We shall. <laughs> no. All your sort ever do in a case like this is look for somebody who's spending money that he never had. Well, they nearly always do that. But I take it you wouldn't. Do you want to know what I would have done? This is what I would have done. I would have taken the money and the jewels. And found a deserted place where hardly anybody ever goes. Hidden them in a hole, under a stone. And then for a year or two, or even three, I wouldn't touch them, wouldn't go anywhere near them. What would you do then? How would you find me then? And what if it was I who killed the old woman and Lizavetta? You believe me. Go on. Admit it, you believe Nonsense. me. Nonsense. I believe it less than ever. Oh, yes, but you believe me at first. <laughs> Waiter. Look at that. 25 rubles. Where did I get them? I hadn't a pen here, as you know. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Oh, Rodia. I've been looking for you everywhere. You should have stayed in bed. Where did you go? I've been sitting in the Cafe Cristal talking to your friend Zamyotov. And I've been walking. Dear boy, you're mad. Why do you do it? Because I'm sick and tired of the lot of you and I want to be left alone. The devil you do. Come on, Hope. Look, can't you see that I don't want your benevolence? Why do you plague me with it? Why did you seek me out when I was ill? Perhaps I was glad to die. Glad? What are you talking about? Just leave me alone. All right. But come to my party tonight. Pachenkov's house, 47 Babushkin's flat. I won't come. Goodbye. You come! It'll do you good!
What do you want? Just thinking of taking a flat. You don't look at rooms at this time of day. Anyway, you should see the porter. Scrub the floorboards. You going to paint them? Is there no blood? What blood? An old woman and her sister were murdered in this flat. Take me to the police station and I'll tell you everything. Uh, come on, it's late. We'll lock up. Well, do as you please. Go to the police station today? Yes. Did you want something? Was the assistant there? For a while. What did you want? He's come to look at the flat. He's a strange one, I can tell you. Why have you washed the blood away, he says, and starts ringing the bell? Come to the police station, he says, and I'll tell you everything. Who are you? I am Rodion Romanovich Raskolnikov, formerly a student, and I live at Schill's house, room number 14. What were you doing up in that flat? Looking at it. Take him to the station! Oh, why don't you then? Now look here! Why are you afraid to? Don't listen to me. Take him! He's a rogue! You can see it! A waste of time going there. You just end up filling up a lot of forms. Take him! Get out! Go on! Move! We kept staggering from side to side. Oh God, I've never done anything like this before. Stand back! Give me there! Give me there! Catch him! Hit the police! Well, I kept shouting, but when I saw him coming, Miss Mail, the horse in. You saw me, didn't you? Yes, we all saw you. What? Your no, hope? I know him. I know this man. Will, will somebody get a doctor? Look, I'll pay. I have money. Will you please help me carry him home. He lives just around the corner and I know the family. Let's carry him to the house. Take care, home. You can't imagine Polenka what a happy and luxurious life we led in my father's house. And how that drunkard has brought us all to ruin. You know, your grandfather was only a step away from government. And at the last ball, before I left my father's house, I danced the mazurka with Prince Shelgor Shoy. And he wanted to make an offer for me the very next day. But I told him, I told him I was already pledged. What is it? Did you get him under the bed? What is it? What's it? He was drunk! Oh, must have oh, God, what has happened to him? Oh, oh, drunk. Drunk. Oh, drunk. Oh, drunk. What happened? Oh, what happened? He was drunk as usual! Oh, what happened to him? What happened? Oh, please tell me what happened. Sorry, no, 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 he's been run over. Oh, no, no, please don't be frightened. I recognize him. And I've been here before, do you remember? Oh, and a doctor's come. No, 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 no I'll pay. Oh, and a priest, just in case. No, no. no I'm sure no, he won't die. No. Oh, oh, Polinka. Polinka, run for Sonia. Quick, quick. Can't you leave him in peace? Is this the sight of gay bad with cigarettes? Go away! Go away! Go back to your room! Go away! Go away. Oh, my God! Your husband, the drunken horses, kept you! 
Does he have to do with him? No. Oh, Maria Ludwigo, I beg you to think what you're saying. I tell you before. May I remind you once again that you are of German, not of Russian origin, and therefore cannot be Amalia Ivanovna. You are Amalia Ludvigovna, and always will be to me. Now, you can see for yourself what is happening. My husband is dying. Let him at least die in peace. Oh, the governor shall hear of this. We have friends and protectors. Why, even now, this young man... Quite unknown to me, but a young man of obvious wealth and connections has come to our assistance. Oh, oh, oh my God! Oh, oh, his whole chest is crushed. Oh, oh, the priest! You'll see him again. What am I to do with thee? God is merciful, my child. Not to us. That is a sin, lady. And what do you call that? What do you think that is? Shh. Shh, be silent. No, be silent. I know what you want to say. Yes. Yes, I forgive. I forgive. And then the sun, he got what he wanted. His release. What about ours? What did he ever do for us but rob us blind? How am I to bury him? <laughs> what am I to give them tomorrow to eat? They met your husband last week. And believe you me, he loved you all. You especially. Here. It'll help. 25 rubles. I'll come back, but have courage. Please have courage. Sir, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Sir, tell me, what is your name, sir? And where do you live? Who sent you? Sonia sent me, my sister. So I knew it would be her. Mama sent me too. Do you love Sonia? More than anyone. Will you love me? Do you pray, Belenka? Would you pray for me? Just add at the bottom of your prayers, and for thy servant Rodion, it's my name. And for thy servant Rodion. <laughs> Well, he might actually shame them if you went in now. 
Why? <laughs> the fact is, I suppose I must be a little drunk in telling you this, but it's all right now. The fact is, they actually suspected you of the murder of those two women. <laughs> I know, it's insane, and they're utter fools. And they wouldn't have dared do anything about it because they hadn't a shred of proof. I must admit, though, Zamyotov came up trumps. I mean, he made no bones about it. He as good as said, we've been fools, and that's it. You frightened him in that cafe. You were brilliant because you treated him exactly as he deserved to be. You knew what he was thinking, so you gave him what he wanted, a confession. And then you stuck your tongue out at him. Oh, I wish I'd been there. Your cousin, the magistrate, was, was he at the party? Very Petrovich, of course. Well, he's dying to meet you. Listen, Razumikhin, I've just been at the deathbed of a friend and I gave them all my money. Dear boy, whatever made you do it? Could you not have given them half? Why must it always be all or nothing with you? You, you're either a student or you're not. You can't be partly a student. You, you either give lessons or you don't. You can't give a few. You either have more money than you... Stasia? No, she's in bed by now. You leave me here, I'll go in alone. Leave you? Are you mad? We're going together. Rodia. Rodia, Rodia! Oh, Rodia, we oh, never thought oh, you'd get oh, back. <laughs> How are you? Oh, but you look so Thin. Nastasia said you'd not been. Oh, but you didn't say it. Oh, oh Mama, let it be. Oh, I'm sorry I didn't mean to nag. But, Roger, you've not been eating properly. I can see that. He's been ill, but he's better now. Well, almost. Oh, and who are you? Oh, forgive me for not introducing myself. I'm Dmitri Prokovich Razumikhin. Oh, yes. I'm a friend of Roger's. We were at the university together. Nastasia has spoken of you. She was the. Roger? What is it? talk to you now. Please, come back tomorrow. But, Roger, how can I... Don't torture me! Please. Tomorrow, I can't, I can't, I can't think of you now. I... Tomorrow will be better. You send us away. After three years? Oh, Mama, he's upset. We will come back tomorrow. I, I think it would be better. Uh, well, let me escort you home. I, um, I believe your fiancé, Mr. Lujin, arranged rooms for you. Yes. Well, let me take you there, then. It would be a great privilege if you'd allow me, and I, I, th I think it would be better. Yes, very well. We'll come back tomorrow, then. Your fiancé called on me. Yes, he said he would. I told him to go to hell. Rodia, what are you saying? Dunia, you're doing this for me, and I don't want you to. And tomorrow you must tell him so. We will talk about it tomorrow. Until tomorrow. Come, Mama. Mama. Now, don't worry about a thing. Oh, but Rodia, your sister is an angel. <laughs> Ever so, what am I saying? I'm drunk. Go to sleep. Tomorrow. Tomorrow. But tell me, now I want to know, how does my son appear to you? He's morose, gloomy and proud, but he has a noble nature and a kind heart. He doesn't like to show his feelings, and sometimes he can be cold and callous. It's as if he were two people, sometimes one, sometimes another. I'm better. I'm sorry for yesterday. I'm so happy to see you both. And as for this one, what would I have done without him? And he's had nothing from me but insult and trouble. Oh, what nonsense he talks. No, really. Don't you? Do you like him? Oh, really? <laughs> of course. Oh, what a pig you are. Well, uh, I must go. Oh, no, 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 don't go. Honestly? 
Well then, why don't we all sit down? Marfa Petrovna is dead. Which Marfa Petrovna? Marfa Petrovna's Vidrik Ailov. The lady in whose house your sister worked as governess. Well, that man's a swine. If I had him here, I'd beat him to a pulp for what he did to your daughter. I beg your pardon. I told him about it, Dooney. Don't that upset you? No, of course not. I'm sorry. I shouldn't have spoken like that. I've embarrassed you. All of you. There's no harm in your knowing Dmitri Brokovich. We already feel you're part of the family. They say Svitri Gailov was the cause of her death. They say he beat her dreadfully. Were they on bad terms? Not really. I don't understand. He is an awful man, it's true. He always had such patience with his wife, and then he seemed to lose it. You sound as though you're defending him, don't you? No! No, he is an awful man. He's supposed to have seduced a young girl who subsequently committed suicide. Why are we talking about the Svidrigailovs? Well, I... I just thought it would help the conversation a little. Why are you all afraid of me? <laughs> you might well ask, Rodia. Mother was crossing herself in terror on the way here. Yeah? Donia, why do you say that? What a wretched room you have, Roger. I'm sure it's the cause of much of your melancholy. Perhaps. It's a very pretty watch, do you? It was a present from Marfa Petrovna. Afterwards. I thought it might have been from your fiancé. No, Mr. Lujin hasn't given her a present yet. Listen, do you? Forgive me for speaking the way I did yesterday. But I haven't changed my mind. If you marry Lujin, then I shall have nothing more to do with you. If you think I'm doing this for your sake, then you are mistaken. I know exactly what I'm doing. I can understand that you don't like him, and he may appear to think too well of himself, but I am sure that he thinks very highly of me. How can you marry someone that you don't respect? I believe that I can respect him. In fact, today I shall have convincing proof that I can. You're lying out of sheer feminine obstinacy. You can't possibly respect the man. I've seen him. I've talked to him. What is the point of having a good motive if the action itself is despicable? How dare you talk to me like that, Rodier, as if you hate me? Good heavens, I haven't committed a murder. Oh, Rodier. Rodier, what is the matter with you? Nothing. Nothing. And what is this convincing proof you're about to receive? Show Rodia the letter, Mother. Yes. It arrived this morning from Mr. Rougin. He apologizes for not meeting us at the station due to pressure of work. He says he'll call on us this evening. What do you think of it? He writes as pretentiously as he speaks. We weren't looking for a criticism of his style, Rodia. And what is this proof of respect that you're looking for? He expressly asks that you should not be present when he calls. Yes. I want you to be there. If he respects me as I think he does, then he will accept it. Will you be there? Yes. And you? I would like you to be there. Mother, I'm inviting him. Yes, of course, my dear. Yes, let's have it all out in the open. Forgive me for disturbing you. I come from Katerina Ivanovna. Yes, what? Well, uh, uh, sit down. Uh, please, sit down. Mother, this is Sonia Semyonovna Mamaladov, the daughter of the man who was killed yesterday.
Katerina Ivanovna begs you to come to the service tomorrow and then to the funeral lunch. Can she afford a funeral lunch? It's a small one. And it means so much to her, you know, to be able to do that. She asked me to thank you for helping her yesterday. You gave us everything yesterday, all you had. Well, we must go now. We shall expect you at 8 o'clock tonight. Hmm? Yes, of course. Do you need him anymore? No, no, of course not. Goodbye, Dmitry Prokovich. Until later. Well, goodbye, Miss. Goodbye. No way. Uh, there's something I want to ask you. No, 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 wait, we'll come with you. Uh, your cousin, the examining magistrate, what's his name? Perfiri? Perfiri Petrovich. What, uh, what about him? Uh, he's conducting the murder inquiry, isn't he? Into the death of the old pawnbroker. Yes, why? Well, I had some pledges there. Uh, uh, trifles, but they're of uh, some sentimental value. And I'm afraid that my mother is going to ask to see them. So, see, what can I do? I mean, I don't want to go to the police station. No, no, absolutely not. Um... We'll go to see Perfiri. Well, we'll go now. I'm sure he'd love to meet you anyway. I've talked so much about you. Come on. <laughs> oh, Sonia Semyonovna, after you. We go through the market, Sonia Semyonovna. I go this way. I, I want to see you again today. Can you tell me where you live? I have a room in Kapanamo Street in Vasco Street, 22. Kapanamo? Well, <laughs> till next we meet. There you are. You wouldn't tell her. <laughs> oh, I don't know. Not I think Dunia would find it very interesting. You <laughs> pig! <laughs> oh, well, sir. well, such high spirits. It's good to see them. He's an ass, an absolute ass. I shouldn't have brought him. May I inquire the cause of so much menament? <laughs> don't you dare! <laughs> It's uh, none of your concern, cousin. Uh, uh, this is my friend, Rodion Romanovich Raskolnikov. <laughs> oh, he has a little matter of business that he wants to discuss with you. Oh, please sit down. <laughs> Samyatov! Dimitri? Well, it's the matter of the old pawnbroker. I had some pledges with her. Um, uh, not valuable, but of, of sentimental value to me, and naturally, I don't want to lose them. Well, the procedure's very simple. You just inform the police that such and such things belong to you, and you'd like to redeem them. Uh, well, yes, that's just it. You see, I haven't got the money to redeem them at the moment. I, I just want to declare they're mine. Well, you can, if you like, write to me, claiming such a On an ordinary piece of paper. Very ordinary. As ordinary as you can find. <laughs> Forgive me. Um, they're trifles, but they mean a lot to me. Well, in any case, you know, your things wouldn't have been lost. You see, I've been expecting you here for some time. Expecting him? Why? Did you know he had pledges there? Well, of course, your things, a ring and a watch, were tied up together with your name and the date on which you left them. How observant of you. I mean, to recognize my thing so clearly amongst so many. Well, of course. We know all who had pledges there, and of all of them, you're the only one who hasn't come forward. I haven't been well. Hasn't <laughs> been well? He's been delirious, raving for days. He even got out of bed and walked out in the middle of his delirium. Really? <laughs> Goodness me. What made you go out, do you think? Some idea of taking another room. <laughs> <laughs> I met Zamyatov in a cafe. I, would you say, Zamyatov, that I was raving? Oh, you talk sensibly enough, I thought. But you were rather irritable. 
trifle. Give me for disturbing you with such trifles. It must be very boring to you. No nonsense. You've no idea how much you interest me. We must all have some tea. Vladimir, bring some tea and cake. Please sit down. What nonsense we all talked at your party last night, cousin. <laughs> Speak for yourself. It was you who was maintaining that crime was a protest against the environment, not me. Do you believe that? Of course he doesn't. He just takes sides for the sake of an argument. He likes to make fools of people. I must get some amusement out of life. No, I enjoy a little joke. But I also enjoy a little argument, a little contest. After all, that's my business, wouldn't you say? I suppose so. Oh, it is, it is. And when I'm in such company, well, I sometimes take the weaker side. Oddly enough, I have a weakness for the weaker side. But all this talk of crime reminds me, I once read an article of yours on the subject. Of Rudyard's? You never told me you had an article published. It's a review of a book. In the weekly review, as I recall. Now, cousin, you talk of my taking the weaker side for the fun of it, but you should read your friend's article. You've been knocked over by the thesis he advances. Thesis? Well, what thesis? Well, he suggests that there are some people who have a sort of right to crime, that they are in some way above the law. No, that can't be right. In what way? Well, as I remember, your friend divides all men into ordinary and the extraordinary. Now, ordinary men lead their lives in submission because, you see, they're ordinary. But extraordinary men have in some way a right to transgress the law. Isn't that right? Not quite. In the first place, I didn't insist that extraordinary man must inevitably commit crime. Secondly, I wasn't talking of their official right, but of an inner right. And that history supports the thesis. Wonderful. Wonderful. You, you, you can't be serious. How, how can you support such an argument? If you look at most of the world's great men, the men who have wrought fundamental changes in society, you will find that most of them never shrank from bloodshed. Such leaders of man, Lysurgis and Solon and Mohammed, Napoleon, were all, without exception, criminals. All these great benefactors of mankind took upon themselves the right to shed blood in pursuit of their goal, and their crimes were sanctioned by their people. Now, had they been ordinary men, their own people would have had them executed. I told you, didn't I? It's beautiful. Never heard it before? No, it's not beautiful. Can you really divide people into, into ordinary and extraordinary people? Well, in the first place, it's not I who divides them, but life. I merely observe the division. Secondly, the division may seem a little arbitrary, but it seems to me that everyone instinctively understands it. And what are the distinguishing features of these two groups? Generally, ordinary people are... Uh, are conservative in temperament, uh, law-abiding. They know that their lives have to be controlled. They don't resent it. Extraordinary men, however, men with the talent to do something new, all transgress the law, destroy those controls in their effort to impose entirely new ones. And if such a man has to wade through blood to do it, then he will find within his conscience the sanction even for that. <laughs> That's a rationale for any sort of license. No, not really. You forget the conservatism of the masses. Those who lay claim to exceptional rights are hanged by the masses who have no interest in recognizing such rights. Yes, but how do you distinguish between them? I mean, are there signs at birth? I mean, suppose an ordinary person gets the idea that he's extraordinary, starts killing people. But that often happens. The fact that you can't tell the difference is immaterial. The people eventually can. Of fools who imagine themselves great and raise themselves up nearly always finish at the end of the rope. Ah, I understand. It is a brilliant notion. Such impostors get what they deserve, and if they don't, well, then they weren't impostors. Not quite. <laughs> there is more to being a great man than the willingness to commit crime. Oh, of course. Of course. But tell me, did you ever, when you were writing the article, it's a playful notion, I don't quite know how to put it. But did you ever imagine yourself as an extraordinary person? And if so, could you bring yourself, if you needed funds to finance some great benefit to humanity, to remove obstacles by murder? 
for instance? And do you think, if that were the case, I'd be likely to tell you? <laughs> 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 Perhaps it was one of these future Napoleons who did for the old pawnbroker. <laughs> Tell me, do you believe in God? Why do you ask? Well, I was just curious. Oh, you haven't drunk your tea. Never mind, some other time. Look, it's been fascinating. Don't worry about the pledges. Just write or better still call in any time tomorrow. I'll be there. Who knows, perhaps, as one of the last people to see the old woman alive, who might be able to help us? You wish to question me officially? Oh, good heavens, no. We'll meet again, I'm sure of it. Oh, by the way, when you last saw the old woman, it was just shortly after seven, wasn't it? Yes, I, I think so. Yes. Um, as you went up the stairs, did you happen to notice two painters working in the first floor flat? The door was open. I ask because it's important to them. What are you saying? They weren't at work until the day of the murder. He was there three days before. Of course, what a fool I am. I quite muddled up the dates. This case is getting me down. <laughs> oh, you back. There's someone to see you. Who is it? I don't know. He's here. He just came. That's Mr. Raskolnikov. What do you want? Wait. What do you want? Why have you been looking for me? Murderer. Murderer. to introduce myself. Arkady Ivanovich Svidrigailov. I'm sure you've heard of me. From your sister and her mother, isn't that so? What do you want? How did you find out where I lived? Oh, pure chance. I saw you talking to someone I happen to know, but uh, that's not important. What do you want? I want to help your sister, but I need your help to do that. Please. I'm not the monster you imagine me to be. I fell in love with your sister. It's as simple as that. I was the victim of a grand passion, not unknown to the human race. I tried to persuade her to elope with me to America, where I would have looked after her, believe me. I had and have every respect for your sister. But not, apparently, for your wife. Oh. Oh, you heard about that. Mm. How the stories get around. And I suppose you heard that I killed her, too. Hmm? Well, it's true. I hit her twice in seven years. But the doctor's reports of her death exonerate me entirely of being even the accidental cause of it. She appears to me sometimes. She appears to me admonishes me. Do you believe in an afterlife? No. Well, it's a matter of taste, I suppose. I've come to believe in it. I think you should, too. Why? Because you look as though you're not so very far from it yourself. There's something very strange about you. What do you want? Would you come to the point? I have to... 
to go out soon. Your sister is to be married to Mr. Lusin. Have the audacity to mention my sister to me. But it's her I've come to talk about. He's not worthy of her. I know him. He's a connection of my late wife's. I feel somehow responsible for it coming about. Yes, well, I'm not prepared to discuss it with you. No, no please, listen. I'm a scoundrel. I don't deny it. I've always been one. I've even enjoyed it. But in one thing, my motives were of the purest. My love for your sister. All that's over, I know that. But now I'd like to make amends. Her marriage to Luzin will be utterly joyless. I want to tell her so, and I want to make her a present of 10,000 rubles. <laughs> You're mad! Why? Because I want to do something decent for a change? Listen, the money means nothing to me now. If she doesn't take it, I'll only waste it at cards. All I want is to see her. Just once more. I want you to arrange it. I should do no such thing. Why not? To her advantage? But why should she object? After all, in marrying Lusin, she's taking money from a man. No, don't be angry. We need have no fear for your sister. I intend going away in any event, on a journey. Will you tell her? You may tell her too that my late wife has left her 3,000 rubles in her will. <laughs> it's true. But I beg of you talk to her. To be independent is better than to be married to losing. Who is that? The man who disgraced my sister while she was living in his house. What's he doing here? He has a proposition to make to her. We shall see. Come on, hurry up. We'll be late. It's nearly eight. Oh, all right, dear. If you hadn't left Perfiris when you did, you would have seen me smash into him. And Samyotov too, that idiot. I went back, you know. I shook my fist in their faces. I told my cousin I'd brain him. How dare he? How dare he imply that you know more than you told of that old woman? I told him you'd spit in his eye. I told him I'd spit in his eye. He said nothing, of course. He always says nothing when he knows he's in the wrong. But I finished with him. Rodia, you must ignore him. I can, I can see now why you've been so upset all this time. For, for an innocent man to live under such a foul suspicion, it's, it's unspeakable. And you knew they suspected. Oh, I see it all now. Rodya, you must laugh at them. Laugh at them. Yes. Come. You all arrived together. How nice. Pyotr Petrovich, how good to see you again. I hope you had a pleasant journey, Pulhira Alexandrovna. Despite my desire to do so, I was unable to meet you yesterday. We were very fortunate in Dmitri Prokovich here. He took charge of us. Have you both met? Yes, I have had that pleasure. I don't know what we should have done without him. Well, now, everyone, let's all sit down. Roger, sit by me. Pyotr Petrovich, perhaps there. Dunya? And Dmitri, yes, that's right. Pyotr Petrovich, please. Have you heard, Pyotr Petrovich, that Martha Petrovna is dead? Yes, I was amongst the very first to know. And I have to warn you that Svidrig Gailov left for Petersburg immediately after his wife's funeral. Svidrig Gailov here? 
Good heavens, won't he leave Dunia in peace? Oh, just because he comes to Petersburg, Mother, doesn't follow that he's come to see me. He has, though. I've seen him. He wants to see you once more, and he has a proposition to make to you. And besides that, he tells me that Marfa Petrovna has left you 3,000 rubles in her will. Oh, yes, that's true. Yes. I was going to tell you later. Oh, good heavens, that saintly woman. But, but what does he want to propose to Dunia? I'll tell you afterwards. Well, I have a business appointment. I needn't be in your way. No, don't go, Pyotr Petrovich. Well, you must be aware the most important request of my letter has been ignored. That my brother should not be present. Yes, I ignored it. Well, since you say that my brother has insulted you, then there must be an explanation. And I hope a reconciliation. Well, some things of Dr. Romanovna can't be excused. You must understand, Pyotr Petrovich, how important this is to me. Well, and to me. Then I must beg you not to be so quick to take offence. If my brother is to blame, then I will expect an apology and the apology to be accepted. Am I not to be allowed to dislike a member of your family, then? If the dislike is based on a misunderstanding... But it wasn't. Now, understand me. Then you understand me, Pyotr Petrovich. That if there is not a reconciliation, then I must choose between you. And I don't want to be mistaken in my choice. Choose between us? Between your brother and your betrothed? Do you put us both on the same level? If I put you on the same level, Pyotr Petrovich, I would place you very high indeed. For I would place you on the same level as my beloved brother. Now, please sit down. I won't sit down with him. Furthermore, I insist you ask him to withdraw. Insist? Are we to consider every wish of yours a command? Is this how we're to be treated? Now that we've thrown up everything and, and come here relying upon you entirely? Apparently not, in view of Marfa Petrovna's legacy. Is that to say that you were relying on our helplessness then? I was relying, of Dr. Romanovna, on the sacredness of our contract. But what are you now relying upon? Hmm? Something of more interest in the secret proposals of Svidrigailov? How dare you! Does the fellow want his head smashed? Oh, Not a word. Not a movement. Go. Go now. Not a word more. Just go. Ashamed, Rodia. You were right. He is consensible. Oh, it's wonderful, wonderful what you did. <laughs> oh, heavens, what am I saying? I've no right to speak like that. Oh, you're right, and you have every right, Dmitri Prokovich. But please, do sit down again. I want to hear what Zvidrigailov said to Rodia. That man frightens me. to give you a present of 10,000 rubles. He wants to see you again in my presence. See her? Never, never. And how dare he offer her money? He wants to make amends. Do you trust it, Rodia? No. Well, I don't know. He's an odd fish. The death of his wife seems to have had some impression on him. But of course you cannot take the money. I believe we should not have come. I believe we should go home. Why? What will you do in a small town? Why should you go back? You're here, all together, and you need one another. Believe me, you do. Look, I have an idea. A plan for a capital enterprise. I know about publishing. I've done a great many translations, mostly books that should never have been published in the first place, but publishers are idiots, all of them. But there's now a great deal of money to be made in books if you have a little capital and a lot of ideas. Now, I have an uncle who's always offering to lend me money. Well, suppose I take a, a thousand rubles from him and you put in a thousand of your three and we begin a partnership. Well, what do you say, Rudyard? It's a good plan, isn't it? Yes, I believe it is. There. And he does know about books. Well, I like what you're saying. Well, it could be a wonderful future for us all. I mean, 
You could take proper lodgings here. Three rooms so you could all be together. Well, where are you going, Rodya? I have to leave. Well, it's not as if I'm leaving you forever. I... Who knows? Rodya, what is the matter with you? I'm not at peace, Mother. I wanted to tell you earlier it's better that we part. I need to be alone. I'll come back if I can, if it's possible. But please, you must give me up if you love me. Otherwise, I shall just begin to hate you. Rodya! Rodya, what's the matter? Rodya! Leave me. Don't leave them. Ever. Do you understand? Do you understand? I wanted to see you. I may not see you again. Are you going away? Perhaps. Tomorrow. Then you won't be coming to Katerina Ivanovna? I don't know. How frail you are. A wraith. Who lives through there? The Kapanamovs. All in one room? Yes. They've been very good to me. And through there? No one. It's empty. It's for rent. And how is Katerina Ivanovna? She's not well. Her mind's unhinged, I'm afraid for. Do you love her? Oh, yes. But she used to beat you. No. No, what are you saying? She's had such sorrow. You don't understand. She'll die soon. She's in rapid consumption. Oh. No. And what'll happen to you? The children will be left on your hands. How will it be? I don't know. I don't know. You live like this to keep them. What good does it do? Tell me that. After Katerina dies, if you fall sick, they'll be on the streets, all of them. No. God will not let it be. It'll be the same with Palenko one day. God would not allow it. Oh, he lets it come to others. Don't say that. God will protect her. And if there is no God, I didn't bow down to you, but to the whole of suffering humanity. How can you live like this? Don't you understand that you're not helping anyone by it? Wouldn't it be better to take a leap into the water and end it all? But what would become of them, of the children? So... What do you do? Pray to God a great deal? What should I do without God? It was brought to me by Lizaveta. 
Miss Yvette. Who was killed with an axe? You were friends with Elizabeth? She used to come here. We used to read together. She will see God. I have abandoned my family today. My mother and my sister. I came to you. We're both cursed. Why don't we go away together? Go where? Well, what does it matter? I need you. That's why I came to you. I don't understand. Well, haven't you done the same? Transgressed? Haven't you destroyed a person? Yourself? If you stay, you'll go mad like me. So why don't we go away together? We'll seek freedom and power. Yes, power above all things over all trembling creatures. Over the ant heap. You don't understand. You'll understand later. Perhaps this is the last time that we'll speak together. If I don't come tomorrow, then you'll know it all anyway. But if I do, I'll tell you who killed Lizavetta. Lizavetta? Do you know who killed her? Yes. And I'll tell you. I've chosen you. I chose you a long time ago when your father first talked of you. And Lizavetta was still alive. If I come, you will know who killed your friend, Zavetta.